You're listening to The Real Wealth Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Today's show is so inspiring. I can't wait to share it with you. I'm Kathy Fetke and welcome to The Real Wealth Show. My two guests today have made a massive shift in just three years from the chains of destructive debt to the bliss of building wealth. I got the chance to meet them at our East Coast Property Showcase last month in Detroit, and after hearing their story, I begged them to be here on the show. And they're here today. So Michelle and Zoe, welcome. So great to have you here on The Real Wealth Show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I wanted to have you on so you could inspire our listeners with your story. (laughs) So where do you want to start? sounds like Michelle has kind of seen her family invest in real estate growing up. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm almost too nervous to start. I'm like, oh, I don't start. I can't leave on the Kathy Fetty show. Um, So I would say, yeah, my grandpa was a builder. My dad worked with him as well. And so I've been around real estate here and there. And I always wanted to do it. I just didn't know how. And I was always really, really scared. Okay. So you were a financial manager for your brother who played in the NBA. Is that right? Yeah, my brother played in the NBA for a little bit. And yeah, when he was doing that, I was his financial manager. And we kind of got into real estate. My mom, you know, I tried to work some real estate deals. And we did a little bit here or there, but not to a rate that was, you know, enough for it to be a full time gig for me. But that's kind of where I got into it. And you played for the Warriors, so do you get yeah. to get special seats, or how does that work? <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to hit him up on that. No, when he was playing, it was easier to get tickets, but now he's a full-time analyst. He does you know, pre-game, halftime, post-game shows for the local channels, so he doesn't have the same kind of uh, access to tickets, but he can you know, pull some strings every once in a while, but we try not to overdo it. You know what I mean? you got to find that healthy balance. <laughs> But yeah, we've gone to a few games and it's definitely a lot of fun. Oh, awesome. That's so cool. Boy, yeah, that's, that's, it's been nail biting. Uh, <laughs> such great athletes playing this week. Amazing. All right. So tell me a little bit about how you met and then how you ended up investing in real estate. Okay. Well, yeah, so Michelle and I actually have known each other for a long time. We've, we've known each other since high school. We met mm-hmm. playing basketball. Basketball kind of runs in the family, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're 1995 both, at the YMCA. 1995 at the YMCA. Like yeah. Eighth and ninth grade. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Michelle playing. I was with my brothers and my dad and those four of us. We needed a fifth to play some some pickup ball and and I saw her and you know kind of came up to her and you know I had a crush on her immediately because you <laughs> you know at that age all I care about is basketball and if you're a cute girl bouncing a ball I got a crush on you and. <laughs> um, but we weren't the typical high school sweetheart story. You know, it took a little bit of growing up to do, especially on my end. I was an idiot back then. We, we, were, um, always, we were always friends, and the story I always tell is about four or five years ago, he found me on Facebook, looked me up, came to town, and um, we hung out. And I said, hey, do you remember in high school when you came up to me and said, hey, you look better with hair and makeup like the other girls? <laughs> 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 and he said, but keep playing basketball, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Play keep basketball. playing basketball. And he said that to me, and and he goes, I said that. I'm so sorry. And I was like, <laughs> you know, not that I remembered it or anything. You know, right, like 20 right. years later, I'm still like bringing it up from high school. So but. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I told her at that time, I definitely don't remember saying that. I'm really sorry, but if I know myself from back then, I think what I was trying to tell you is that if you put any kind of effort, you would blow anyone out the water. Any, any girl that would try, you would basically have to be. It's pretty much what I was trying to tell her. So, yeah, we fell in love with the grown-up versions of ourselves when we reconnected in our 30s. And then, uh, yeah, and then that was kind of... Um, we, got, we got married a year later, and then bought a house and first we moved into a condo his mom talked us into buying it she said never rent so we're like okay so we bought a small condo in Denver and then this was 2014 2015 I can't remember the dates exactly nice. and then we bought a house which I just moved from Texas Oklahoma area so I got approved for like 250,000 and I thought I was rich and I went shopping in Denver and <laughs> you know couldn't quite get a mansion so but we bought our first house it didn't go as far in Denver as it would have in Tulsa. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be. And we were, didn't want to park our cars in the neighborhood. It's some of the places we could get for 250 You know, it's just so different. 
But you did find a condo, at least? Yeah, we bought a condo, and then we bought a house out in Green Valley Ranch near the airport in Denver. And then I would say that our whole financial and real estate investing story started when Zoe's brother went off contract. And so the family's income kind of changed, and he wasn't being his manager anymore. And then we got married, and we kind of do our finances. Zoe wasn't on salary on our own. And then I came home. I was working. I was a safety engineer slash industrial hygienist and working in oil and gas as a consultant and just doing some long hours out in the heat and yelling at contractors. And I came home one day, and I was like, okay. And we yeah, were, let me, we let were let living months and months. Part. Okay. Okay. Let, me, let me tell this part, Michelle. This is fun for me to tell. So Michelle was actually living full-time off of her income because at the time I was transitioning into being a mortgage loan officer and trying to build my business. You know, um, We're getting married, and, and I'm thinking, oh, man, not getting a consistent paycheck with the family business or real estate that we're trying to do with the family business. I need to get into something. And so, so she was basically you know, making good money, but we were living paycheck to paycheck with her income as I was trying to build my business. So she came home one day, and I'll never forget her. I remember like it was yesterday. And she basically said, babe, our marriage is not what I thought it would be financially. I, I feel like we're in a rat race. We're not making any progress, and I hate it. <laughs> mm. and, um, and she was like, I can't do this anymore, you know, um, as far as just the direction we were going financially. Because, you know, like she said, we got those new houses and stuff, and well, we, got, we weren't we got really able to afford that. $3,000 mountain bike. We were looking to maybe lease in another car and it was just, you know, month to month. And we just moved into a new house and bought a new friend. Yeah. And it was just like every dime we made was every dime we spent. And we had student loans. We had credit cards. I mean, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, I think total we were about in 75000 total debt of everything. So just, yeah, negative net worth. And we weren't really making any moves financially to get ourselves out of that with the decisions that we were making. So it was time for a change when Michelle said that and it kind of woke us up and we had a lot of hearts of hearts and then we decided to kind of start changing things. So what we did was we jumped into uh, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, really started tackling our debt and um, basically just started to make drastic changes with our yeah. financial decisions and you know, started to live well below our means. And you we know, went, we extra went hours. crazy on it. Yeah. I mean, we sold things, we, anything we could sell. We, we moved out of our brand new house. How many months did we live there, though? I think we were only there for three or four months. Okay, yeah, we moved out of that. And then when I told Zoe, I said, hey, let's move out of that. Let's move in your brother's basement, you know, and call everybody has a basement. Let's live there. And he goes, do well, you want to tell him what you said, Zoe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pretty, much, I pretty much asked her, well, well, babe, what do we tell all our friends? <laughs> I think I was just, I was, we had just had so many house parties and we were excited about yeah. our new, new big house in Denver, you know, and, well, I, was, and it's, I think it's a mentality change, you know, when yeah. people see you move from a brand new house to go live in your brother's basement, they think it feels like a status, like we're wrong. downgrading, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. We're downgrading in status or something. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so yeah. what I said to him was like, we're going to tell our friends the truth. We're going to tell them. You know, we're doing the Financial Peace University. We're getting out of debt, and we're changing things. We're gonna we're paying <laughs> off our student loans. We're paying off our cars, and that's what's up. Thank God for a wife that is straightforward and black and white. So, um, you know, <laughs> she, she helped me to kind of recognize my my pride and help me lay that down. And thankfully, I was able to do so, and we were all in. We decided to, to make the change. I bet you inspired a lot of people when you were honest about it. Yeah, it's so easy to want more and to keep. Right. you know, accumulating and accumulating and then suddenly you wake up and you, it's just this weight of responsibility and debt. And then you, you got to ask yourself, like, like you said, you know, it could be a breaking moment right. or a, a moment of enlightenment, which it sounds like it was both. <laughs> right. No, it was huge for us. And when we started to do it, it was actually a fun thing to do together because we, you know, it brought us closer together. You know, the fact that we were able to uh, commit to making those type of decisions and changing, we kind of just felt the momentum together and it really was something that spilled over and before you know it i mean i think what was it babe nine months we were completely out of yeah death. yeah um, 70 something thousand which we didn't think we were planning maybe three years to pay that all off and it just became a snowball where we it just became really addictive and competitive between the two of us who could come home and they'd someone had gotten a free lunch that day or who packed their lunch and i mean we just killed it how much debt did you have paid off in nine months it was about 75000 total. Oh, my gosh. That is really impressive. 